Hey everyone, Ray Allen from the Barbecue and Brew Show. Welcome to another episode. We're coming to you live from Montalto here in Victoria with Matt Wilkinson, uh, creative director, as yep. well as co-founder of Street Barbecue. Thanks for coming on the show, mate. It's good to Cheers, have you here. Thank you. It's been uh, an amazing day talking talking food and enjoying some great food, mate. And uh, yeah, just uh, thanks for having me. It's been really, really nah, interesting. No, it's been a great day. Yeah. It's absolutely. a special place. It is a special place. We're obviously coming from the, the trout pond, the yeah. uh, troutless trout pond, I think you call it. <laughs> yeah. So it's good to be here and, and actually just uh, yeah, experience uh, this place. And it's almost like the magic of this place. It's it's. I've been lost in it for the last few hours with you, just cooking and, and sort of just getting getting to know you a little bit more and understanding everything about street barbecue in Montalto. It's been, it's a really nice place. I think uh, it's hard to explain without actually being here and, and experiencing it. Yeah. Well, it is. It's like, it's it's in Red Hill, Morning Peninsula, Victoria, and it's like this beautiful coastal climate, north facing, so where we are, north, south across there, um, producing great, Pinot, Chardonnay, and we had some Riesling today. Mm. Uh, delicious wine, and um, there's two restaurants there, and I'm like kind of caretaker, yep. and work with the exec chef and the GM on the business, and one of the restaurants is over fire, so, and... Yeah, tell us about this one. Yeah, well, it's it's a Perilla, but it's an automatic one, so it's, it's quite posh. <laughs> that was very cool. Um, I saw it, I saw it, and I was very impressed. Yeah. And indoors, too. Indoors, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, you know, great extraction, but we've also got an amazing... Uh, pizza oven that's uh, half gas half wood mm. um, and yeah the the basis of the menu is we've, we have a hundred acres here about three to four acres of that is non grape or olive production so yeah. vegetables and fruit yep uh, we had a salad earlier from it so it's we d I designed that menu for the restaurant four courses sharing and everything's the only source of heat we have is a Perilla Grill. Yeah. Um, so everything's cooked from that. That's fantastic. And look, it's just the um, you know, even the pizza oven you mentioned before. Like it's got a it's got like a rotating dance floor, like yeah. a revolving dance floor in there as well. Like I've never seen a pizza <laughs> oven like that. That's just like a spin. It actually, when you press a button, if you want the pizza to cook quicker, yeah. It actually, you press a button and it spins up to the roof and down, <laughs> so it can cook a pizza in just under 60 seconds. Wow. So we, we put it in last year and it's completely changed what we can do and how many we can do and the quality of that pizza. I said, I mean, I got to taste the, uh, I guess the, like it, it was focaccia, the focaccia, yeah. which was just amazing. And the salad, we're just <laughs> like, I'm, I'm a huge salad fan, but today I couldn't stop eating the yeah. salad, right? Like it was just tomato, fresh tomatoes, the beetroot, and then it was the, uh, the buffalo. Um, buffalo curd. Buffalo curd as well. Yeah. Just amazing stuff, mate. Yeah. So look, Talk us, like, I just want to take it back a little bit. Obviously, Montalto is your, your current, one of your current uh, projects. But where did, where did the, the food journey start? How did, how did you get into, you know, um, what is this amazing career of yours? So, I'm 44. I've been 24 years in Australia. Um, you can say the accent's definitely going away. Yeah, it's definitely going away. I was like, <laughs> I actually can't, try, I can't even put, like, an Aussie accent on, so I won't even try. No. I can do many English accents, but not an Aussie one. But the... Um, I, I played football, soccer, mm -hmm. uh, but I, my mum and dad divorced when I was quite young. And my old man was in the beer trade. He worked for Scottish and Courage, which is Foster's UK. He launched Foster's UK into England. Uh, he ended up in pubs. I lived above a pub. Uh, I left school early, uh, either soccer or I wanted to be a, when I stopped playing soccer, I wanted to be a publican. I was too young to drink, let alone own a pub. Yeah. And I got into food and I moved at 16 from uh, Northern England to London. Uh, at 19, I moved from London to Scotland. And then I decided in Scotland that I was gonna travel, went to, around France uh, and then came out to Australia and called it home and cooked in some of the best kitchens, ran some of the best kitchens in Australia. Amazing. Until 2010. Yeah. Yeah, and then I opened up a, a business, Pope Joan, which was cafe, bar, uh, nighttime. And in about 2017, no, 2016, um, I bought out my business partner. We were co-founders of Pope Joan. And I wanted to get back to cooking, and this is where I found fire. Yeah. And I've done lots of events 
outside farms, outside, I've cooked on bathtubs, cooked on <laughs> the ground, yeah. cooked on grills, um, never low and slow, and yep. we've talked about that. Yeah. But the barbecue that we've cooked on today is the, the OG of where I kind of refound myself. We ended up doing these summer camp cookouts. Yeah. Everything cooked from there and little bits from the kitchen. And I just re I refound my love of cooking. And it was that uh, transformation of heat and cooking over live fire. I must admit, I use shit wood. Uh, <laughs> and that's how I met Cav, uh, one of the co founders of uh, Street Barbecue. And um, here I am now, this lover of cooking all things over uh, flame. Yeah. I do love my vegetables and at meat stock I've been booed and shunted <laughs> for that, yeah. which is great. Um, but um, yeah, I just love cooking and I love the whole world and the uh, variance of what the world offers. Yeah, uh, I think you know you sort of mentioned you found you found flame and um, and I sort of I'm sort of in the similar boat of finding finding flame a few years back and 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 enjoying that sort of cooking and the different. It's it's it. I mean, at the end of the day, you're fund fundamentally doing the same thing. You're obviously creating a, a, a food to eat and whatever. But I think once you you bring flame into it, and you've got that uncertainty and that level of, um, you know, like the miscontrol or the lack of control that you have. Yeah. Um, but then learning to work, live with that is so unique. So we well, we, t we talked about um, cooking a barbecue and what that is, and I, th I think the emergence. But the one of the leaders I think will be Australian barbecue. Yeah. I really do. You know, we've got such an amazing culture and Australia's got a foundation of whether it's just a simple sausage on a, on a barbecue, yeah. whether it's low and slow or all these cultures and uh, amazing melting pots of flavors that we've got to offer. Yeah. But it's that coming together. Like I, I do love cooking over flame and that's, you know, when you just want to get in the shower and like <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's something fresh. about it, it's yeah. the smell. Yeah but it's how you all gather together at cooking and how you work together uh, over a drink, just for it, that's, it's something special and you don't find that over a house kitchen oven. No, you don't. And, you know, we talked about that today where, like what we did today was when we had the, the barrel going and we were just basically, you know, topping up the firewood on there and then just cooking a bit, we were eating, we we're having a drink and then, and I, I found, especially in the last few months, I, I do that a lot now. Where I just have people over, and I'll just literally have, you know, I have the pk at home, and it's just basically fired up, yeah. you know, and then ramp it up. If you need to cook it, you know, you do a river, see a steak, and you're like, oh, you want some wings? Let's do some wings. And like, I just feel like it's, it's, I don't know what it is. It's just something different by the fact that you're not going inside to, to get the food. Yeah. So if you're outside, you just stay outside, and it's just. It's, it's so much more interesting, so much it, more fun. It is, and I think there's something in our DNA about that original oh, of fire starting yeah. yep. and the gathering around a fire to tell stories, mm -hmm. to share stories. Yeah. And now there's, there's so many ways to cook over the fire and especially so many different barbecues to cook oh, with that are part of it, that the stories are just getting greater and the, 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 the shared stories are greater and it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a brilliant world to be in. No, absolutely. And I think that's the, you know, it's a great segue to probably just talk about the different street rubs, street barbecue rubs you've got here as well. So obviously we've got a handful sitting, oh, we've got the range sitting here with us at the moment. Yeah. But what made you start street barbecue? What, what was the, the drive and passion in, in a world, um, part of the pun, full of rubs? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so. And it is. And that was, that was exactly it. And uh, so my introductory in was, you know, high-end cooking and... Um, I had a business, Pope Joan. Mm -hmm. It was coming to the end and I wanted to see what I wanted to do. And I'd met at that time, Andrew Cav yep. and um, the other co-founder, Adrian Sester. And I looked at this world and I'm like, I love creating stuff. I love that element of creativity and creativity into flavor. Yeah. And the low and slow was just starting then. It was like 2017 into 2018. I was like, look, I want to create some myself. And I'll confess, I am shit out at low and slow, right? <laughs> if, you, if you give me a brisket, I'll be like, we're better off eating it raw than me smoking it, right? Yeah. But I also, the, the market was there of, and there's so many great low and slow barbecuers. Like, they know it. Like, yeah. There's no point in me telling a story. My professional element is hard and fast. Yeah. Uh, some flame, even some gas, right? Yeah. 
but my true love of barbecue is the world of flavor. When you travel to a destiny, you are intoxicated by, you might get there late at night and you walk the streets and it's just hustle, bustle, bustle yeah. smoke, yeah. smells, sounds, yeah. food, and you're like, hung, hung, hung. I was recently in Singapore and did, you know, the wing, um, the wing street, like, you yeah. know, like, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my God, like, it's just, it's excitement. Yeah. And I wanted to take my love of those flavors and bring them back, bottle them, uh, because I didn't think there was anything like that in the marketplace. Yep. So we, so this is back in 2018, we, we decided on street barbecue as a name. I, I went to both Adrian and Andrew um, to say, look, can we do this? Adrian's uh, a, a wonderful human being, a name in the industry. Adrian's an unbelievable um, manufacturer of them. I thought it was a great element and we, we've actually got about 13 rubs, all R&D, trial tested. We launched with seven. Um, I pulled one out, which is the Shanghai, yep. which is this, you know, the Uyghur area, northern China into you know, um, Nepal, where it's that Silk Road element. Yeah, yeah. And it was a bit lost, not really sold. And so this, the sixth founding is uh, Balinese Sate, again, yeah. brings you a memory. Um, I think we've got the Hong Kong, which is a mixture of you know, Peking oh, duck yeah. and black bean, oh, I love pork that and black bean gone. beef, and it mixed together. Yeah. And I, I, I was trying to develop it something that was Peking ducky, but barbecuey, and you know, the beef, the pork, it caramelizes, the fat come out. There's a little bit of sugar in them, and the ooze into it. You can do it. You can. You've you, you've done probably the best recipe I've seen. Oh, the pork slow. ribs. Oh, yeah, they were amazing. I just. And I just basically took the rub and then made a glaze out of it as well, yeah. using more black bean sauce. And it was just, and you know, and I can even take that sauce and you can take that base, you know, and then you get more hosin into it and yeah. turns into another direction. Direction, again. yeah. Uh, that was amazing. Those ribs are really good. I, I mean, I love taking pork ribs on different journeys yeah. when it comes to low and slow, especially flavor. And these, I must admit, these rubs definitely stand out in that sort of really you know, that real international or, or the sort of World. tra worldly yeah. traveled sort of flavors. And I really, really enjoy So, And that, that was the thing, like the, the Mumbai, the recipes from a uh, pork butcher in the Catholic area of Mumbai. And he had a little stall out the front doing goat and pork on it. And it was just unbelievable flavor. So I, he gave me the recipe. Yeah. The togarashi, which is actually my favorite. Yeah. I love, to oh. like the art, like the Japanese, the Koreans. And it's similar technique and similar charcoal, similar quick flame, are the masters of hard and fast yeah. in sticks, like a, a chicken wing, a little drumette just rolled over, ooh, ooh, a little yeah. waft of wagyu, yeah. oh, a little yeah. seasoning. It's like, mm. yeah. so the, the togarashi, I actually stole a <laughs> container of it and dissected it. We dissected it, r and d and we got there. Yeah. Um, the Mumbai is a classic element. There's, there's a, quite a bit of mint in there, which you don't pick up, but it comes through afterwards and carries all the other flavors. Um, and then the Tuscan, which is, you know, State Fiorentina, Bisteca mm. from Tuscany, but the brick chicken, of memories of there. Yeah, I've got to try this. Explain uh, the brick chicken. So I think everybody knows Bisteca. So again, fire, you know, wood, charcoal, um, it's basically SB, uh, salt, pepper, garlic with paprika and some oregano. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you quick cook it. It can be on, on the bone or off the bone. Generally, it's a full big ribeye. Well, as we know, it's ribeye. But the brick chicken, and it can be either done uh, on an open barbecue or in the pizza oven where you uh, spatchcock a, a chicken. Yeah. Um, olive oil. I'll try and do it my best at Italian accent, olive oil, and then this, what is the Tuscan rub, all over it, you let it sit for a bit, and then you throw bricks into the fire. Yep. So if it's the pizza rub and you throw them into the fire, if it's in your fire, you throw them in. And then you start your chicken um, crown side down, so bone side down, yep. leaving the breast up, and which is, which is weird, because most people start breast down yeah. anyway, but, um, and that's how I cook everything. We did the quail that yeah. way today. Um, uh, bone side down, and then you cover the top and you put these uh, bricks on top and it's into it, and then you cook it all the way through with these bricks on top. Ooh. So it's kind of pressing it, yeah. this 
the, it pushes the juices through. It's that seal of yep. thing, and it was just one of the most speeds it up as well. It was one of the most remarkable things I've ever yeah. eaten, and that was literally served with some salad leaf, well, some radicchio and some rocket and um, like a traveso, yep. and some tomatoes with red onion on top, balsamic, yep. and, and I was like, mm. yeah. So each of the street barbecue rubs are a memory of mine through journey yeah. and we've got the asado it's the asado that's a global element of what you do with mm. it is it's the enhancer for all things whether it's seafood meat vegetables like that on roast potatoes well that on beef that on beef like there's no like, way no yeah deal oh, yeah. But every, every continent around the world has that version of it absolutely but i think in the barbecue world we we do label things yeah and asado is that wonderful, again, coming together around fire that we know, mm. whether it's Brazilian, Argentinian, South American, it's a great base rub for, for beef. And that's, that's how they all came out. We've, we'll hopefully, we've got four more to go, but this is where they're at. And, um, you know, it was, it's, it's not been, it's not, it's not flying off the shelf. I'll be hundred percent honest. Like it doesn't, but we never expected it to, because it, they were different into a market, but I think they're really good. Look, I I got to agree with you, and I think the um, uh, you know the tagarashi, the asado, uh, you know, in the Hong Kong, I've tried those already, and the, the flavors are great. And I think the you know this is the market. So sort of the question I ask you is like, so for a non barbecue person who probably not as is not as familiar with rubs, yeah, or the the concept of rubs, and probably more used to liquid marinades and things yeah. like that. What do you what do you tell them? When, how would you use this rub at home? Basically, <laughs> well, it's actually like my wife doesn't barbecue. Um, I think we are lucky if our wives barbecue with us. I actually feel lucky that she doesn't barbecue with me, so I can <laughs> drink more. <laughs> um, but she uses each one, except the togarashi. She uses a sprinkle. They are a rub or a seasoning. And that's really important to understand yeah. about the whole world that we're in. What is a seasoning? What is a rub? And what is a marinade? So a marinade is, is wet. Yeah. A rub is something that you massage in and leave. And a seasoning is bef just before cooking and can be after. Yeah. So the asado, the Tuscan, I, I never now roast a chicken at home with roast potatoes with the Tuscan over it and um, a roast chicken. My foundation of my bolognese is I add the Tuscan, a little bit more oregano, a touch of chili, and the rest is you know, right. cook it out. The Hong Kong, uh, the hoisin and black bean, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's great for barbecue, but shit, it should be, it's like yeah. pre-marinate your mince or your stir fry, yeah. do the little uh, Chinese massage, of, put a little bit of bicarb in yeah. there, some soy, use the Hong Kong, massage it in, do it in the morning before you go to work, come back, have your vegetables ready, yeah. noodles or rice cooked, yep. bam, <coughs> hot, yeah. throw it in. And again, that's something like the smoke and fire when you get the wok going. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing more exciting than seeing something walking all up and just how quick they go and they're yeah. dropping. Go play it all. Um, pretend you're like a Chinese chef or you're in, uh, in, in an Asian country for it. And it, it is delicious. And again, the, the Balinese, the, the Mumbai, the base of it, is a, is a great foundation for a dal, for a curry. Oh, okay. But again, that mixed with yogurt and lamb chops and marinated. Oh, yeah. And you let the alkaline of the yeah, yogurt yeah, yeah. and the flavors come through. Leave it for two, three days. All yeah. this like one hour before. Yeah, If yeah. you know you're cooking on the weekend, yeah. I'm leave it I'm for so three, four so days. I'm so for that. Yeah. Because I find like, yeah, you sort of, you, you underuse the spice when you do that, when you're like one hour before or whatever. But if you know you're gonna cook, just get it, get that prep time. It's amazing what a day, even 24 hours of marinating, a yeah. dry marinade. Oh. Just even test it. Like just, just like the one thing I, A, I professionally cook, so I've, I've, I've put things to its limit. Like a chicken stock, and I know it's got nothing to do with barbecue, but a chicken stock, why the fuck would you put carrot, onion, leek, celery in it? Yeah. Cause you're going to cook it for four or five hours. It's going to end up tasting the farty vegetables. Just put chicken in there, roast them, and then infuse it at the end. Yeah. So they're the elements that I learned. So if at home you've got a bit of time, get some yogurt, get the Mumbai, marinate the lamb chops, leave it for three, four days, and then do it an hour before and like taste the difference. I'll guarantee that 
the, the that meat massaging and being able to rest through the enzymes being able to broke down. Yeah, I think even the salt's just melting. Melting, yeah. Like in the sense that, yeah, and that's that's probably the, one of the biggest bits is the fact that you don't, you leave for half an hour, an hour, the salt's just haven't got their job done yet yeah. as much, so. And for uh, the non-barbecuers, and I was knowing the, the, the show, it's a barbecue, but for them non-barbecuers, it's okay barbecue to be messy. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's oh, good. Absolutely. Yeah, that's... Whether that's the barbecue itself, <laughs> your hands, that's what napkins are for, that's yeah. what hot soapy water's for yeah. to wash, get in it. Yeah. And that's, the, those, these rubs are about that, you know. No, that's it. And I suppose if someone was to, you know, get one of these, is there, what's your favorite? What would you recommend is like, you know what, like this is going to be, this is one I absolutely love or are they all, like it's like your favorite child question, I can't answer. No, no, it's not like, I, I, honestly, now they've been, we, we launched in 2020 and I do go through stages again, what, where I am, what protein I've got and what the season is. Yeah. Like I am a massive lover of the Hong Kong. But I've also gone too hard and fast on it and over sprinkled. Yeah. Um, and I've learned over time that you, it's best on um, pork scotch neck cubed or uh, scotch beef diced or rump. Yeah. That you lightly sprinkle it and add a little bit of oil to it and let it massage in, hold it, start it. And as you're cooking, you just keep sprinkling. Yeah, right. Keep sprinkling. Yep. And then like... You know, we, we know all about resting meats and how it is, and especially in the low slow, we know why the tenders. We don't do that quite often with kebabs yeah. or with things on skewers. So let it rest and give it a good, yeah. another good oil, mm -hmm. another good sprinkle. And then just to, just before we're about to eat, let it rest and then give it another roll. So it just gives that little burst of heat yeah. into it. And it's so unctuous and so yeah. umami. And yeah. then there is some sugar in there and that's what it is, but that's what, you know, eating a Peking duck, which is the hoisin, yeah. is that, oh, I'm ready for the next one. And you get to like five, you're like, I wish I'd just had four. <laughs> yeah. But it's that, that's what you want out of food. You want yeah. that to go next. And um, the Tuscan is my all round. Um, I've fallen in love. Tuscan is all round. Tokyo is my favorite. Yep. And I, the asado, I, I've, I sprinkle it on everything, scrambled eggs. Um, your it, salad to go with the barbecue. Yeah. And I, I, I got absolutely ridiculed at meat stock. I got told all the names on the sun because I, I did vegetables and then I started to argue with the audience about saying, you all spend so much money on your meat but you don't really care about your vegetables, <laughs> shit coleslaw and corn. Um, but a simple salad that goes well with any protein, however you've barbecued it, is just some chopped up iceberg, tomato, cucumber, some freshness in there through parsley, dill and mint. Mm. Avocado, and then that adds that texture. So then I, I, I'm just a lemon juicer. Yeah. And extra virgin olive oil. And then toss and it. The, 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 the asado. The asado the top. Top. And it takes the, the, the garlic crystals in there, add some crunch. Oh, yeah. And then take it, and it's the best, best salad for all barbecue. And I think the, um, you know, you sort of mentioned seasonings before. Yeah. And I think, you know, that, that's something I sort of. Over the time of cooking as well, I've, I've sort of learned that we just need to um, we need to remember that cooking takes you know takes a certain level of flavor away from the seasoning or a rub, yeah. and then it's not a it's not there's nothing wrong with topping it up at the end. No, you but know? yeah, and it's it, understanding the rub. Yeah, and then not all rubs you can do it, but yeah, no. I definitely like we, we did some cooks with the cups cooks we did today, same sort of thing. And I think it was the quail. Yeah, we did the quail, and then literally cooked it up. And obviously it was on open fire, so there's certain level of burning and different yeah. changes. And then hit it with a bit more seasoning. It was just and it just pops up. It's also going into that cooking element. And um, if I'm getting too chefy, I'm sorry, but it's like <laughs> we all know the resting element and mm. like really great barbecuers. They know it. They understand it. They know why. They know the structure of the meat, relaxing in. When that relaxing of meat comes, it's bringing more moisture, right? That when you really, really season, right? And if you think seasoning, the seasoning ones, is just like salt, that's when you add it because the moisture's there, it dissipates its back in and brings added flavor. Yeah. And that that's just that, those little bits and pieces. Like I wouldn't do that with the Mumbai, yeah. right? Because that is that, it's, it's not even like you can rub it onto a, a, a lamb shoulder yep. and cook it. I actually did some um, beef ribs myself with it. Oh, actually, sorry, sorry, a lie. Pork ribs with it, because that's where it foundation from. And I just got some garlic and ginger 
pureed it, spreaded it all on, and then completely covered it in it, oh. smoked it yeah. uh, on a primo, and then wrapped it, poured in a little bit of beer and some yogurt and more of the seasoning again, and it just melted and it boated it up. Yeah. So it got a bit of crust and then underneath was thing. And then when I, when I tore them off, it was like, they were so unctuous and delicious. Yeah. And that's me le- trying to learn from the low and slow guys, especially the comp, the comp guys who are legends. Yeah. Well, how can you use that differently? Because you wouldn't do that in India. No. But I wouldn't do the lamb chop, for example, what we said before in the yogurt, and then spray it on again. Yeah. But the Tuscan, the asado, are 100% sprinkle it over again top up yeah yeah absolutely or even for the first time yeah you know if you just want to add some a little complexity to a flavor yeah. it seems it's like for me seasoning rubs is it's as simple as it's a packet of crisps yeah think about when crisps come out of a fryer or they're yeah. air dried you can apply and then you go into those ones where it's like all over and it makes you uh, look <laughs> like mm. or there's ones where it feels like there's still some seasoning at the bottom yeah, 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 salt yeah. and vinegar yeah, you know? yeah, yeah and then you've got like cheese and onion with cheese and onions like coated all in yeah a salt and it feels like there's yeah, yeah. more in, and it's that's that, off. It's that process of going well. If you, you know, application to end delivery. Oh, that's right. And I mean, you see, mentioned vegetables before as well. So, what are your tips on like which one of these go really well in, in sort of you know roast veggies and, and barbecue veggies and things like that, just to get somebody thinking about not necessarily eating protein all the time. I think Tuscan all the way for anything that's from. Um, is a root vegetable. Mm-hmm. The togarashi on eggplant. Ooh, like okay, it's, yeah. you know, because eggplant, eggplant miso. Yeah. So if miso is a great carrot, the umami of all root vegetables, um, your nightshades, so zucchini, salt, burn it. Like uh, watery vegetables do really well from burning. So they, what it happens is it they end up once the end part of it is not doesn't taste burned. Mm-hmm. If you get a zucchini, cut it in half, salt it, just wipe it off and burn the shit out of the top. Like it's black, yeah. right? And cook it so it's not soggy like my nan used to do and they're all mushy. <laughs> yeah. It's got a little bit of crispness to it. So you would burn it one side, flip it over, lower the heat, so move it away from the barbecue so it's not as indirect. Yeah. And just cook it through. Um, you then slice it up. A little bit of miso, some of that togarashi, a little bit of olive oil, hit it with some rice vinegar or if you want to bring it back into blending a little bit of lemon juice, yep. mix the two together, throw it in. It works just as good with pumpkin, even turnips, which is pig's food over here, but I like turnips, I've got this earthiness. Um, <laughs> so yeah, eggplant, zucchinis, turnip, cabbage. Such a wonderful, again, burnt, yeah. burnt, like oh, it's burnt become cabbage. a range. Yeah. Cabbage is umami. It can take more. It's like, it's like the digestive of dunking biscuits into tea. It's like, give me more, I can dunk again. Like, it's like, burn the shit out of it. It's umami. Again, layer it, anchovies, parmesan, soy, garlic. That with most of those spices, uh, the street barbecue rubs, is great. Um, And then lastly, the, the Hong Kong and the Balinese is, if you've got stir fry or your you know, you're putting beans or bok choy or uh, broccoli yeah, over a barbecue. Yeah. Um, I always have a spray water bowl. Oh, yeah. So you're giving a little bit of steam so it's not burning it too much. Yeah, yeah. Pot in it. Yeah. And then throw it into a bowl, uh, a little bit of the satay or the um, uh, Hong Kong or even the Mumbai over it. Toss. Again, yeah. a little bit of lemon juice. Boom. Done. Bang. Nice. So what is, um, what do you, what, I mean, I will consider, what do you cook? What's your, what do you cook at home? What's your, what's your everyday, what's your Sunday, Sunday dinners and Sunday lunches and, you know, like obviously you're cooking a lot, you're creating a lot of food. What do you, what do you like to cook? What's your fun cooks? My fun cooks, uh, it's boring. <laughs> I, my wife thinks she makes a better bolognese than me. The kids think they do. I try different ones. I think my bolognese is amazing. I always go get the offcuts from um, uh, anywhere that slices meats, yeah. delis. They've always got offcuts, and they're like three dollars ninety nine. So yeah. I love making like a bolognese. 
when I fire up the Primo, I love doing different things with chicken and yeah. birds. My favorite cut, and has been for a while, um, is the uh, pork scotch neck. Yeah. It's so diverse, you can dice it, you can fry it. But as a steak, I actually prefer it over beef. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. it's like, again, growing up in England, roast beef, it's a thing, and then being in restaurants, it's, you know, you do a scotch or a rump or a sirloin or a uh, ribeye, it's kind of, it's fucking boring. Yeah. Like, it's, it's great and wow, but you really want the meat to be amazing, yeah. and the rub is like a, element to it as, a, as a, a scotch neck is so diverse in all flavors can take a pounding uh, it's got the fat content in there to keep it succulent yep. so I, I am an advocate for making sure I, I never used to use a we've talked about this before like a thermometer I used to be like um, I used to have like a little pin on a corkscrew to put it in and tap <laughs> um, and I've started to learn to use the instant read. Instant read. Yeah. And I, again, we talked about this, like, I like pork pink. If you cook yeah, it I was all the way yeah. through, yeah. and you, like, every knows when something's in meat, if it's sticky, if it's smelly, if it's visually not looking great, just, it's not good. Just, yeah. like, take it, try and catch some eels with it. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> um, but the meat's right, and you're cooking it above, it's, 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 it's killing everything off and a, a beautiful piece of pork scotch should be on that little bit pink side. Yeah, okay. Um, I, yeah, think, I, was, I mean, I asked you that yeah. because it was one of those things that I, I think just growing up and just something that, you know, I mean, when, you, when I do post something a little bit on the pink side, I tend to get those questions on the socials. Yeah. Um, and yeah, pork was one of those ones that definitely... Definitely sort of triggers alarms with people when it comes to it. And the one we had today had a little bit of pink to it, but yeah. it was so delicious and, and soft and succulent. Well, you've got, you've got to think where the pork neck's coming from, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're more similar to a pig than uh, the, like, yeah, the pork part of, uh, of, of beef. Yep. Like it's coming from there and it's, we call the, you know, cold play, rush of blood to the head. Yeah. It's got all that, all that blood structure coming up through. It's it's massagey. There is so many different elements coming through that it's it is a pinker meat. Yeah. Right. It's um, we we talked about this with chicken. I've, I know some oh, yeah. people that absolutely butcher chickens. So it's so dry, but mm. it's like oh that's the way to cook. No, chicken legs again. It is a different color to the breast. So if you get a bird and you study a bird and you open it up raw before you roast it, and you look at you slit the breast, it's white. You slit the legs, it's pink. Yeah. Like, you've got to cook it out to get all that pinkness out because it's, it's um, again, I'm no scientist or doctor, but it's the blood particles holding within um, uh, a small uh, sinew element to the leg. That's where, you know, you split it off. Yep. Um, it should be pink. Yeah. If, so if you put your thermometer in and it's reading... 70, let's say 75 for safety for yep. chicken. That's win a winner chicken dinner. Why eat dry chicken yeah. when you can have it pink and delicious and moorish? Yeah. And, you know, it is a challenge for some people, but for me, I prefer it that way. That's Not cool. raw, yeah. but, <laughs> but cooked. That's it. And look, it's. You, know, you talk about the primo before and cooking some barbecue and things mm. like that. What's what's the barbecue journey been like for you? Because I guess, like you said, you found fire and it, it you know, obviously you know changed your life and things like that. But what's uh, you know have you have you attempted low and slow? Have you got into anything? Yeah, anything like more? I, I I must admit I do love doing. You talked about what I like cooking. I do love cooking uh, turkey Marylands mm. on a drum. Yep. I am in love with the primo. I yeah. will be honest, like... It's a solid, yeah. I didn't think, when everyone talked about um, certain ceramics, you know, let's call it green egg. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, yeah, bah, 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 bah. It holds the heat, it's this, it's this, it's this. And then I actually got a Primo. I was like, <laughs> yeah. There, and I, I talk about them all the time, holding heat, the structure, it's so simple, the vent to the top to the bottom, yeah. the, the oval basin, it is banging, yeah. and I'm not. I'm not going to slag any of the rounds because there's some really good round ones in the market. I just I'm a bit adapted to that oh, oval yeah. now. But the the drum, the beautifulness of, I don't have the patience, and because my whole mind has been trained into order in, let's go. 
you're cooking something in max it's taking is 25 minutes the preparations all happened before yeah. that low and slow sat there yes if we're at a farm and there's a half a sheep or a whole yeah hole, and you take it low slow you beer 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 and i get that and i can see it and i can see the live flame yeah but the whole chamber of yeah, yeah, yeah. And you close it and you're waiting <laughs> and is it the ring yeah. is it the mountain ring yeah. and everyone's judgy yeah I, d I just didn't get it and i'll be honest every time i've cooked that way it's, it's not been good <laughs> um but the drum i've been able to really nail that smoking yeah but also i grew up in northern england yorkshire where it's cold smoking yeah so i find at times offensive hot smoked um Hot smoke fishes, especially sometimes briskets. It's like, oh, yeah, right. Like it, you're really playing on. You really need to understand your fuel and your smoking Absolutely. addition. Yeah, yeah. And that's a real special technique. And I've eaten some amazing ones, especially from the comp guys. It's like, whoa, yeah, hats off. My like, world. Yeah, not yeah. my world. So the drum is that thing, and um, yeah, it, but anything that's with that live fire even if it's a hole in the ground and the camping swivel yeah. element you've just put some stones around yeah it's coming back to that joy of just being next to it and with other people and usually with a yeah a bevy in hand no absolutely man. and i mean that's why i love it as well i love doing that so what's um what's coming up what's uh what's 2024 bringing it gonna bring for uh matt <laughs> well keep carrying on with street barbecue i really it feels like the momentum's happened and um just see what the vision is. Um, the idea is there's three of the brands and relook at what we are and what, what else we'll do. I'll hold that for a later conversation. Yeah. But just to really give structure, I've, I, I do have lots of projects and cooking and advisory and going off and doing events. This year's about really focusing on street barbecue. Yep. Um, and uh, just launching the other ones yep. the other flavors and just keep it creating trying to create some content but just enjoying the journey yeah and i think that's the most important that's probably thing important, yeah i yeah. like that and we'll, we'll we're going to see you in midstock this year yeah hopefully if cav and jay tell me i'm coming this year again <laughs> um i still i honestly still get nightmares about being called um well, i don't i can't swear oh you've been swearing, oh, swearing. I'm swearing anyway it's like <laughs> it's meat stock not veg stock and that was actually quite funny i laughed <laughs> um and then the last few and then um ptsd for the last then getting stock. told uh last one i won't mention names um about going matt stop chefing it up just do something fun and easy <laughs> and i ran out of time doing the fun and easy because i was talking too much <laughs> uh so i do hope meat stock. i think it's a, an amazing event it is isn't it? Uh, a full mixture of uh lovers of all thing barbecue yeah uh, great food, great music, booze. I got my first tattoo. Yeah, so I've been looking <laughs> at your pizza tat. Looks We're great. Talking about beat stock, hopefully, like I got this at Melbourne last year. I'm glad you got a big one, so you don't have to worry about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, after three months, my son, my youngest son, goes to me, Dad, why did you get love hearts on your pizza? I was like, uh, Are they yeah. love hearts? <laughs> and I didn't actually know yeah, how it was. Yeah. So my first tattoo at 43 years old, sad was at meat stock uh 2023 and I'm, I'm i'm i wanted to get the chicken one yeah to Wumba. yeah i think i might get another one this year oh I'll, i keep walking past it and then because i'm always busy i just like and then i'm like oh and then towards the end of the day i've just had too much to drink mm. and i'm like oh i really shouldn't have a tattoo well now. this is why this one happened <laughs> <laughs> but they were it's it's an amazing event and you know what it's like hats off to the meat stock crew oh yeah they're amazing it's job. an amazing event and really hard to pull off a from the events and doing lots of events, the size of it, the culture they've created, and that it is now a uh, all things barbecue yeah. festival for Australia. Yeah, we should all be proud of to be part of it, and that the, that it is here in Australia. Absolutely, man. I absolutely love it. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't. Part of me wouldn't be. I could, a lot of what I'm doing now, what I wouldn't be here if I was no meat stock. Yeah. It just, it's such an amazing event. So, look, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here, Legend. mate. It's been an amazing day. Uh, it's been great to 
find out more about you and, and learn more about Montalto Street Barbecue. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, we can get on some stage and have me start and cook up a feast as well. Yeah. See how that works out. But uh, thanks for everything, and uh, thank you. We'll uh, come on the show and. All the best for 2024. And thank you for supporting Street Barbecue. So no worries, mate. Easy. Thank you. All right, mate. Thanks. Cheers. Yeah.